and actually I'm lucky just before this whole thing started I bought like two things of yeast I don't know why because I barely cook so I've got yeast but now I want to make my own sourdough starter but with gluten but tomorrow morning I'm going to try to make it but all I have is all-purpose flour regular flour so I'm gonna do a little research tonight but I want to make my own starter my own yeast hey guys I'm doing it I'm doing it and I will save this to my highlights thank you a couple of celiacs for inspiring me so this this one is actually I googled how to get a gluten-free starter using all-purpose flour because that's all I have and I don't want to do gluten-free um, so this is from the website the kitchen and this is day one and so I added three quarters of a cup of flour plus two tablespoons and a half half a cup of warm water and I'm putting it over our fireplace which doesn't go all night I'll shut this off right before we go to bed but it'll be nice and toasty up here same situation same um made them at the same time the only difference was I actually stirred this with a metal fork or metal spoon and I stirred this with a wooden spoon so I'm going to go back and just write that on the notes just to see if it makes a difference hey okay, you guys I have a yeast update so the one from the kitchen definitely did a little bit better um, it, and also my, my containers are pretty big. It's rising and there are like a few little bubbles in there, but I really am competitive with Sam and I wanted bubbles like hers. And the one from this, a couple of celiacs is also bubbling a little bit. I just got a message from my auntie Mary saying that she thinks my mixture maybe was a bit too thick and it should actually just be like pancake batter. So I just was like, I'm just gonna simplify this. Since it has been 12 hours for both of these ones, I am gonna feed them. And I think when you feed them, you feed them with just the same amount. And then you let them sit for another 12 hours. So I'm gonna give that a shot today, now. <laughs> I'm just gonna do half and half, although, oh shit, I mixed it with a metal fork, I wasn't thinking, but I think it might be okay because it's stainless steel. Um, so half a cup of flour, half a cup of warm water, and it was a really nice texture. So I'm gonna let that sit for 12 hours now. By the way, after today, after I fed this yeast, got three of them going here, I have no idea what to do with this, how to cook with it or anything, so. I'm gonna try to figure that out as well. Three different uh, subjects there, and I'll let you know how that goes. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm actually going to make a quadruple batch of Tori's Perfect White Buns from the cookbook. I'll try to document that some. Okay, guys, I um, am checking on my starters, my yeast. Um, and I just opened the oven. They've been in the oven all day. The oven has not been on, but the light's been on. And when I opened up the oven, it smelled like delicious fresh bread. So I think something amazing is going to be happening here. And tomorrow will be my third day. So if I'm going to take a look at it tomorrow in the light and show you guys. But for some reason, I feel like I'll be ready to use mine tomorrow or the next day. This is really interesting. So the um, recipe that I used here it definitely has doubled. There are bubbles. I'm saying day two because I've added to it already. Um, and then the one that I did from the kitchen, oh my gosh, it is. Now the reason why this one, this one might be doing better than a couple of celiacs is because this is a gluten-free recipe, but I used gluten dough exactly 12 hours since i've added to all these and then i'll see what happens in the morning so i'm going to add half uh, a cup of flour half a cup of warm water and then all of these same things again and mix and then i'm going to decide what to do in the morning what are you up to you hun just feeding my babies <laughs> <laughs> that just sounds so weird that's half a cup for that one this reminds me of like kombucha yeah so you get your bacteria cultures it's going similar. And half a corner. Let's say R2D2 on it. Day one, day two. <laughs> well, this one's gonna be way too big tomorrow. I'm gonna have to discard some of that. What am I gonna do? Shit. This is the baby. This is the this is the mother load right here. That's that's what one's your favorite? I think this one, but I guess we'll see which loaf turns out better. Okay, so why do you have to keep feeding this every day? Like if you're worried about that being too much, then why just don't feed it? Um I don't know. It's like, why, why do I keep feeding you every day? Well, I keep getting bigger. <laughs> this is probably going to be to the very 
It's very pungent. <clears throat> no, but like I, do you get what I'm saying? Like, why don't you just leave it and let it do its thing? I like, how long does this process have to go on for? I I think it could go up to five days. <clears throat> but you, but I think this will be ready to use. So it's five make days oat. to make a loaf of bread. Yes, yeah, sourdough takes a long time if you use like a wild y yeast. I think. <laughs> I don't know why you're not doing this on the table either, but whatever. I think all of these are going to turn out just lovely. Hey guys, I'm nervous. I opened up the oven this morning and the oven was warm, very warm. Like had to have been 35 degrees maybe. And all of my big bubbly starters went down. Like it was like up to there last night and it went down and I don't really see any bubbles. So what should I do? They're all kind of the same. Should I feed them again? Well, Auntie Mary, I didn't tell you this, but when I opened it, there was actually crispy stuff on the top where it like cooked. But what I did was I just took off the crispy stuff. And then as soon as I took off the crispy stuff, it started to rise. Like it was like being contained down there. So it like started to bubble up. And so I just took off the crispy stuff, discarded half of everything in each jar. And then added equal amounts again. And I'm going to, I fed it basically. But I'm gonna let it sit again. And I think it's gonna be okay. Auntie Mary, watch this if you're listening. I did borrow my mom's scale and I do think it's important to weigh it instead of measuring your flour and water because it's supposed to be basically equal parts in weight, not in like volume. So I'm gonna try again using her scale. Also, I do think that day I had it in the oven. I Ever since then, it hasn't really been rising and falling. It's just been kind of staying the same. It's It smells fine. It's separating. It looks like it's hungry. So I'm going to try it again from scratch today. I'm going to keep the two that I have. One of them I think was just bad. So I just tossed one of them. The other two I'm going to keep on trying because I think I'm only on day three, but I'm going to try it again without putting it in the oven ever, trying to figure out how to keep it warm without putting it in the oven. And secondly, using the scale. I'm not giving up. I really believe in this because the first day it really doubled. It really got bubbly. And then it just I should actually get rid of one of my jars because there's only only so much yeast in the air and my jars might be competing themselves. So some people love my yeast stories, but some people don't. But you guys, I'm sorry. It's what I'm into right now. Sometimes it's recycling. Sometimes it's yeast. Okay. Um, I'm not in my kitchen because we're starting a conference call in one minute, but I just want to give you an update. I really felt like I knew what I was doing yesterday. I was like, this is going to work. I got my mom's scale. I'm going to make sure I'm using one to one. Um, <clears throat> It didn't even rise, not at, not at all. And so I was watching Monica Hibbs' story yesterday and Mary Conkin wrote on her note, she um, gave Monica some starter and on it said, you need to do one to one to one. So this morning <clears throat> I looked at my yeast, hadn't it's bubbling, still smells good, it's fine. I've been doing some research, you can't really kill it, unless you can, but unless it's moldy or like completely dried up. You can. So what I did this morning was I got my scale out and I started a new jar that had one part yeast, one part water, one part flour. I actually put um, saran in it. I did one to one to one, covered it with saran wrap. It's in a nice warm place. I'm going to keep you guys posted. What day am I on right now? I think I'm on like day five. It is slightly bubbling, but it's not rising at all right now. So I'll keep you guys posted. It's looking good. Got those bubbles. Starting to get hungry. I can see some of those juices piling up there. Oh, God. Never worked so hard for a loaf of bread in my life. At the very beginning, you add equal parts, equal parts of whole wheat flour and water, and you let it do its thing for 24 to 36 hours. After that, it's always one to one to one. So right now, I have about 100 grams, 101 grams of the starter that I just showed you. And I'm gonna add 100 grams of all-purpose flour and 100 grams of warm water. And then I'm gonna let it sit for another 12, I think, 12 hours, possibly 24 hours. Um, so we'll see how that goes. This is day two. It definitely did not double, but it has risen a bit. And there are bubbles, which is good. It's funny, because when you first make it, it's so thick, it's like a muffin batter. But then after you let it sit for 12 to 24 hours, it kind of thins out and gets all bubbly. So same steps as yesterday. 
I'm going to keep uh, about 100 grams of this, and then I'm gonna to add to it 100 grams of warm distilled water and 100 grams of all-purpose flour. So, um, and then I'll readjust my elastic and see how we do uh, 12 hours from now, midnight tonight, before I go to bed or first thing tomorrow morning. So, smells interesting, like yeast, smells yeasty. Good morning, everybody, happy Sunday. Okay, so I am still attempting and failing to make my own sourdough starter. Um, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I'm just not very good at it, I guess. But um, <clears throat> I'll keep you posted when I finally figure that one out. But as you know, um, the sourdough schoolhouse, is that what it's called again? I almost forget. Anyways, they dropped off a loaf of sourdough the other day and some fresh starter. So I'm like, I can't let this go to waste. Um, and it's doing beautifully. So last night I made what's called a levet, levet. So basically that's like a big giant starter that you need to make your sourdough. So sour, like starter is just like a little bit, but then if you take that little bit and add a lot to it, then you get this. So wow, look at 